thank you so much for coming tonight. So we're going to get started without further ado. Thank you for your patience and waiting for us to begin for people to trickle down into their seats. One last person, come sit, please. Okay. <laughs> so there will be three events tonight. Each one are approximately 15 minutes long. There is no intermission. We ask that you sit the whole show. And I'm going to be running down, announcing them, running back up. <laughs> so uh, please bear with us. And I'm the single crew member here. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so uh, we are going to start with our first scene, which is an acting ensemble from the play I and You by Lauren Gunderson. And uh, it is act one from the play, a portion of act one. And the character of Anthony will be portrayed by Bingda Zhang, and the character of Caroline will be portrayed by Aditi Packerel. Please give them a round of out of school for a while, huh? Uh, yeah, but I'm still gonna graduate and everything. That's great. Good, good for you. That's really great. Yeah, duh. Okay, rules number one through 400, don't be nice to me. <laughs> what? You were starting to be nice, like using that way to go voice. And I'm letting you know right now that I'm not delicate and everyone thinks that I'm delicate and it makes me wanna break glass. <laughs> okay. Don't be nice to you, and don't touch your turtle, and don't look at you. Well, not while I'm texting. My face looks weird. I'm just trying to keep it all straight. When everyone's so nice, nice becomes fake. I hear that. I do. People are weird, right? Like, sometimes my dad just laughs when he says hi to people. He's like, hello, Bill. Ha ha ha. Why does it do that? It's not funny. It feels fake. Like you were saying, nice can be fake. Boo. What? Photo tackle. Hey. That was beautiful. You're not. Ooh. Are, are you posting that? Of course, absolutely I am. Without a veto option? Boo. Come on. You're starting to be nice. Something had to be done. You're making me hate the internet. Fly away, little picture. Fly no, away. No, I was agreeing with you. Come on. What is wrong with this thing? I swear to God, if I lose Wi-Fi, I'd rather lose my nose. Would you put down the phone? Just put it down. Can you put it down? You're obsessed. And you're what's wrong with America? Uh, hello? This is my lifeline. So like life. Is it? Is it really? Yeah, it is. I don't see anyone like at all anymore. Except for right now, the time in which I'm here, seeing you. Well, the only people that get that upset about phones are geriatric. Take off your Anthony suit, Grandpa. <laughs> OK, I'm just saying, the thing about that paper is that it generally always works. I promise, if you read it, you'll love it. Leaves of grass? Sounds exhilarating. I know, but okay. At first, it's like everything else they assign. Like, oh my god, why is this so important and oh? But then I was like, oh dang, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's a long poem, but he talks about humanity and nature and America, because he was writing during the Civil War, right? Like bullets flying by your face. So there's a lot about death and life and grass. And yeah, but it's like spiritual. The way he writes it, it floats off the page. I mean, he's legit crazy, like a rambling crazy homeless guy, but in this genius kind of way. <laughs> and OK, if you're ever afraid of dying or anything, 
read this, and it will make you feel pretty great about it. Cause what is like, hey, dad, you wanna be a jerk? Okay, fine, but you can't stop this barbaric yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Why would I be afraid of dying? I didn't mean that you would. Because I'm fine with it. Okay. <laughs> Are you afraid of dying? I don't know. That surprises me. Why? You seem like the type. <laughs> what does that mean? Cocky. Hey! And a boy. What? Boys act all tough, but they get scared too. They won't admit it, but they're so scared. Like, they totally bail when stuff gets weird. I don't bail, and I'm not scared. Except of fish. <laughs> what? <laughs> the, their eyes. Fish? <laughs> we don't have to talk about it. And I will try very hard not to use that against you later. <laughs> Don't pity me, is what I'm asking. I can't pity you. I don't even really know you. So... So... Um... This is my phone. Um, this is my room. Um, I've been sick pretty much ever since I was born. That's me. Yup. Uh, they tried a ton of stuff when I was younger, but now we're at the point where I just need a new thing. So I wait. But I'm a pretty good candidate because I'm young and I came by this crap honestly. It's genetic. Yay. Anyways, livers are a robust organ. So it's not as sketchy as it can be, but it's still kind of crazy. So my life is kind of crazy. So I'm kind of crazy. Like, I've always been sick, but never, you can't go to school sick, which sucks so much. I mean, I'm a senior. I have crucial things to do, and then all of a sudden, my house is this crappy clinic, and my mom is on constant red alert, and even the stuff people post on my Facebook is weird. Like, it's all of a sudden full of kittens and smiley faces, and we miss you, girl, which is totally not my style. So? So? You wanted to know? I did. Now you know. I still don't know really anything about you. Uh, um, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> Taurus. Actually, I'm on the cusp, so I just go with a better horoscope. What else? I know a little Spanish. Excelente. My dad made me take Latin. Keep going. Okay, okay. I really like old Elvis movies. <laughs> Are you like 80? Shut up, it's vintage. Have you seen that man in a uniform? Total winner. He died on the toilet. Jealous. <laughs> I'm really not. Okay, okay. Um, I used to swim. And I dyed my hair purple once. And I was into American Girl dolls for all of zero minutes. And penguins are hilarious. And there is no better flavor of ice cream than Chunky Monkey. None. Period. Don't cross me on this. And you have or stock a strippy cat who has a lot of hats? She likes to accessorize. What's her name? Bitter. Is her cat's name? Does she look amused? <laughs> You're so strange. Do you like Elvis? Okay, come on. Jailhouse Rock. He's still king. <laughs> no 
Oh no, all this make you very special. All right, Secret Gramps. All right, Cat Lady. Junior, Cat Lady, there's a hierarchy. Okay, I'm just saying, you're not, you're not only your thing. My what? Your thing thing? Your... My terrible dance? <laughs> your sick thing. You know what I was saying. Yeah, I did. And you should learn a little anatomy. It's higher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My dad and I were watching the Discovery Channel, and they said that if you take a kidney and put it into somebody, they ask it first, right? And then, when they're ready, they slap it. What? They slap the kidney so that it wakes up before they put it in you, which is completely insane to me. Slap it? Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, what? Crazy. Crazy. You do know that livers and kidneys are two different things, right? But. Do they slap everything? Do they slap brains? They don't transplant brains. But like hearts or your thing? I try not to think about it too much because I kind of think about it all the time and it still freaks me out, so... But it's pretty cool that they can even do that. That it's kind of simple, like it's a body part, like a Lego. Awesome! And it's weird that it's so normal when the stuff is bionic. Thank you so much! I, uh, like your room. Thank you. It's not as girly as some girls. And if I ever need a slogan, that'd be it. No, I mean the pictures and stuff. It's lively. I don't edit. Then it's expressionist. So I live in one big weird collage? No, it's great. My room looked like a 10-year-old left and never come back for his stuff. I'm talking... <laughs> Fire truck wallpaper. Yeah, if you wait long enough, it'll be ironic. Okay, just go with me on this. You and Walt Whitman are kind alike. Yeah, super doubt that. No, like with your broom. And okay, he only wrote one book in his whole life. One. He just kept adding to it, you know. What are you talking about? Why didn't he just write new books? They were new and old. See, he would release a new version with all this new stuff in it because he added and adjusted and kept building on what he had. Even on his deathbed, he was amending. God, I hate that word. Amending? No, deathbed. Hello, if I knew this was my deathbed, I'd be like, hey, can I please have another bed? <laughs> All goes onward and outward. Nothing collapses. And to die is different from what anyone supposed. And luckier. Luckier? I don't know, but different. It's a new idea. Okay, okay. I read or heard somewhere that sometimes you can feel it coming. What? Like dying. And obviously in some cases you can't. Like it's a pretty big surprise if the bus cam comes at you. Like, ah! <laughs> but for me, out there, there are a billion ways to die. In here, there's one or two. And I know exactly how the first one goes. The second one? I don't know. Zombie attack or something? I don't think about it too much. <laughs> or fire. That'd be a way to go. Fire. That'd do it. Oh, you asked your mom for batteries, right? Oh, that's what's taking so long. She never puts things in the same place twice. And then she asks me about it. Like, I go around hiding all the small stuff just to piss her off. I'm not a gnome. My dad does that too. Like, I would ever in the history of recorded time know where does he put the paprika. If it's not the pop tart, I'm not sure what's going on. God, you're such a boy. What? All you do is eat crap. Try a plant sometime. If it's in the pop tart. You're so weird. You're so cranky. 
you're not what I expected to happen today. I celebrate myself. What I assume, you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me, as good belongs to you. Basketball. You're so weird. You're so weird. What's your issue? I had waffles for breakfast. I'm not ashamed. What'd you do? <coughs> I went to school. I played a game. I came here. I think the amount of glitter is adequate. Can we keep working? Did you win your game? I... No. I don't know. You don't know if you won your game? We had to stop before it was over. Okay, um, I'm not very sporty, but that's unusual, right? Uh, yeah. This thing is due, like, first thing in the morning. Why'd you stop the game? Well, you haven't done the poster yet, and the presentation's all on me. Can we just keep working? You don't seem to realize how rare it is for me to care about the outcome of any sport. Like, any of them, and I've heard that there's a lot of them. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> it's just that you'll hear about it, but it's pretty bad. What is? This kid. We were at the end of the third quarter, down by five, and this kid just falls over in the middle of the court. <coughs> just drops. Whoa. He was playing fine, too. He was so quick, a senior had to guard him. <coughs> and then he just starts breathing kind of funny, touches his chest, and just collapses. Oh my gosh. Fell in the middle of the court. The wood of the court. How did they get it so shiny? Was he okay? How? Uh, no. He died. He died? In the middle of the court. What? Yeah, in front of everybody. Wait, what? In like two minutes, he was just dead. Holy crap. Told you. Yeah, but oh my gosh, that's horrible. Yeah. Oh wow. I know. Are you okay? Am I okay? Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's <laughs> intense. That's completely messed up. It is. It's totally messed up. Whoa, he died? And and the entire time, I was thinking of that stupid line. I mean, I busted my brain on this project. I was reading a stupid poem, and I was thinking of that stupid line, and, and you work open ball, look for the open man, pass, move, I this mystery, here we stand. Why am I thinking of that, you know? But it just sticks to my brain. And, and I say it, and I play, and I say it, and I play, and, and he falls over. We're standing there, panting, sweating. What's going on? <laughs> I am this mystery. What's wrong with him? I am this mystery. Why can't he get up? I am this mystery. I am this... And then he's dead. He's dead. Here we stand. And he's just dead. to do. I'm fine. You don't have to 
be fine. That's the most... <laughs> I don't know, but you don't have to be fine. But I am. Okay. I mean, what did people do? Did they pray? Pray? Yeah, for the guy. I don't know. People were pretty much freaking out. Were his parents there? I think so. Oh, gosh. They got us off the court pretty quick. But I think I heard the dad. Oh, dang. That... That is the worst kind of awful. That that makes my stomach hurt and, like, oh, the back of my eyes. That just hurts everywhere. Yeah. Ow. Sometimes I, uh, sometimes I wonder what people are thinking, what he was thinking. When? When it started, or, or before? Probably about basketball. I don't know. So, you came here to work on homework after you just watched some kid die? Well... That's not a little weird. The whole thing's kind of weird. Why wouldn't you go home? This thing is due. But you should be with someone. I am with someone. Someone who can help you. I don't need help. That kid needed help. And no one could help him. What was wrong with him? Who knows? Who cares? Okay, but... But what? He died in front of his entire school. And no one could help him. And he died. Yes, it happened. Check the news, check Twitter. Yes, it happened. I was there. It's just weird that no one told me. Please don't. It was terrible and messed up, and I really don't want to see it again. Okay. Well, sorry. Can we work on something? I mean, I have actual school in the morning, okay? Um, okay. Okay. And talking about how awful it is doesn't really make it any less awful. Okay. So, um, I was thinking, what if we focus on the ending lines, you know, like we end where he ends or something because everyone's going to do the beginning, right? But the ending is the most important part. The ending is not the most important part. But it's what like ends the whole thing and it's beautiful. And what's your problem with the ending? It's boring. It's boring? It doesn't even really end. What are you talking about? You love this poem. You will hardly know who I am or what I mean is the ending. And what does that even mean? Uh, no. The ending is missing me one place, search another. I stopped somewhere waiting for you. Because he just said no one will know who you are. That's not what he said. What does it matter if they're all alone? What are you talking about? It ends with nobody knowing anybody, nobody finding anybody, and nobody meaning anything. Because they're all alone with some grass. The best part is this. I know I am deathless. Page 30, best part. I get that you're upset. I would be a wreck too, but- I'm gonna go. Wait. I have stuff to do. Anthony. If we're not gonna work. We are working. I just want to finish this. Me too. I'm covered in glitter. I just want to finish this. Feel good about it and go. I know. Fine. Yes. Leave. You have stuff to do and I obviously don't. I obviously have nothing to contribute because I live out of my stupid room. <laughs> That's not what I was trying to say. Well, if it's all about death and dying and all the crap that you're afraid of, 
then you might want me and my expert opinion on the matter because my whole conscious life I've been prepared to die or, or thinking about it or planning for it or staring it back in its stupid eyes because if I didn't, I'd just quit. So, so no, it's not some stupid, awful, evil thing. It's, it's just a thing that happens every day. Get over it. know what I'm saying. Is it kind of weird to say thanks for saying that? It's a little weird. Thanks anyways. You okay? I, I'm just tired. I can go. I'm no, sorry. No, this always happens to me. I just have to take everything slower. I'm fine, really. Because I can go. No, not if you want to finish this thing. We still have to tape my part. It's all right. I'll read the ending for you in class. <laughs> no, you're not. It's mine now. You, you can't have it. Dang. You refuse to make anything easy, don't you? Correct. Hand me turtle. I'm just saying, we could take a break, regroup, recharge. Okay, fine. Jazz me. Hey, sorry I got it. Anyways, okay, we could go Bill Evans, Miles Davis, Coltrane. Do you like Coltrane? I love Coltrane. Coltrane's the king. <laughs> this is so great. I've never met anybody at school who gets it like I do. <laughs> <laughs> and you still haven't? <laughs> oh, but you have heard of it before. Of course I've heard it. In elevators. Oh, no. No. Do not even. Jazz is the heartbeat of the universe. True jazz is the way the world... It's the chaos day. It's the order out of chaos. Jazz is the musical form of... I don't know... Giddy, perfect math. And what instrument do you play? Saxophone. <laughs> of course you do. Oh my God. What? Watch out for guys who play sax. What? Why? Uh, because it's the type of instrument that gets you into trouble. Who said that? My grandma. <laughs> Hold on. The saxophone is sonorous and textured, and it carries the human range beautifully. And it's made for jazz, and jazz is the essence of creativity. It's a perfect, syncopated, and improvised perfection in this life. Oh my gosh, hand me your phone. Let's hear it already. All right, just don't look at any of my texts. This girl sent me some weird stuff. Oh, well, look at you. Shut up. A flirting jazz man. It's not flirting. Whatever. Everyone leads a double life in text. Shut up. I bet the girls like it. Oh. <laughs> well, hello, ladies. Would you like some awesome pause? Jazz? Shut up. Come on. Oh, yeah, the I'm already grown up thing you do? I do not. Oh, you totally do. You read poetry and play jazz and have... Whatever, some feelings. You have like a trillion girlfriends? How many Facebook friends do you have? I don't know. Everyone knows. <laughs> a lot, but they're mostly like basketball guys. And you play basketball? You are such a senator. I just like <laughs> jazz. I don't get girls. They get all weird and mad and I'm supposed to know why. And I really don't. So I just try to avoid the whole thing for no real purpose. 
Thank you. No, not you. I don't mind you. You know what I mean. Do I? I mean, you're real. Whatever, would you just listen? Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate having you guys come out to the show. It means a lot to all of us. Thank you. I was hoping today to talk a little bit about creativity. You know, a lot of people struggle to give themselves permission to be creative, and reasonably so. I mean, we're all a little bit suspect of our own talents. <laughs> <laughs> if the orders to isolate ourselves and our homes have shown us anything in the last few years, it is that human beings turn instinctively to the arts when we feel things deeply. I believe we're on this here star in space to, to try, try to help one, one another. another, right? And first we have to survive, and then we have to thrive. And to thrive, to, to express, express ourselves. ourselves, all right? Well, here it is. We, we have to know ourselves. What do you love? And if you get close to what you love, who you are is revealed to you, and it expands. For me, it was really easy. I was 12 years old when I did my first professional play. It was called St. Joan by George Bernard Shaw at the McCarter Theater. And boom, I was in love. My whole world expanded. I played cops. I played criminals. I played priests. I've played sinners, and the magic of this over a lifetime, over, over 30, 30 years of, of doing, doing this, is that you start to see that my experiences, me, are not nearly as unique as I thought. I have so much in common with all these people, and so they have something in common with me. You start to see how connected we all are. In university, a friend of mine was trying to convince me to do choir. And I thought, no way will I ever do that. But then I found myself in the room, sitting in the bass section. And we start with the Kyrie from the Requiem by Mozart. And, and he raises his hands. And then the 30 basses all take a collective breath. And, and we launch into it. I remember I started to tremble, and then I started tearing up, and I realized in that moment that I was hearing not music, but my name, my true name, not Eric Whitaker, but this name inside my body somewhere. 
I remember it like it was yesterday. This counterpoint around me, like a cosmic Swiss watch, with humanity pooling into all the cracks. A hundred and ten people moving and breathing together. And I left that room totally transformed after 50 minutes. It was one of the great experiences of my life, and I ask you, how would you create that great experience for yourself? How could you help create it for others? I think about today, how I went around from painting to painting, asking each to eat me, and each did. How, how my skin fits the whole time. Didn't once bunch up at my ankles or squeeze my head into a pin. I did four charcoal drawings from the permanent collection, a Chagall, a bronze mark, and two Picassos. I picked those because I could tell the paintings were looking at me as hard as I was looking at them. I walk over to the canvas, or maybe it's the other way around. Some paintings stay on a wall, not this one. It's color flooding out of two dimensions, so I'm smack in the middle of it. I pick up the charcoal and begin to draw. The teacher sits down in the chair next to me and starts drawing. I'm aware of his hand flying across the page. It's stirring the air. He gets up and stands behind me, looking over my shoulder at my work. Listen, you must see it, feel it, draw it. They're all one thing, not three things. See, feel, draw. One word, go now. Do not think, Picasso, he says. If only we could pull out our brain and use only our eyes. Pull out your brain, use only your eyes. Go, he says. Go. And then it's like I'm paddling through the break, watching a big wave swelling, coming toward me, knowing that in a moment it'll sweep me up into something enormous and powerful. I count down. Three, two. One, I go. Faster. He says, see, feel, draw, one word. Good, that is it. You, you will see with, with your hands. hands, I promise you. Now, I contradict myself. Picasso, he, he does, does too. He says, pull out your brain. Yes, he also says, painting, painting is, is a blind man's profession. profession. And, and to draw, you must close your eyes and sing. Yes, everything is true at once. Life is a contradiction. We take in every lesson. We find what works. Okay, now, now pick up the charcoal and draw. Most of us really want to offer the world something of quality, something that the world will consider good or important. And that's really the enemy, because it's not up to us whether what we do is any good. And if history has taught us anything, the world is an extremely unreliable critic. The great beat poet, Allen Ginsberg, was once asked, Don't you know that everybody thinks you're an idiot? And the whole country's making fun of you. And he said, That's my job. I'm a poet, and I'm going to play the fool. Most people don't spend a lot of time thinking about poetry, right? right? They have a life to live, and they're not really that concerned with Allen Ginsberg's poems or anybody's poems. Until their father dies, they go to a funeral. You lose a child. Somebody breaks your heart. They don't love you anymore, and all of a sudden, you're, You're desperate, desperate to make sense out of this life. Or you meet somebody and your heart explodes. You, you love, love them so much, you can't even see straight. You're, You're dizzy. dizzy. Has, Has anybody, anybody ever felt like this before? What is happening to me? And that's when art's not a luxury. It's, it's actually, actually sustenance. sustenance. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion, medicine, law, business, engineering. These, These are, are noble pursuits, pursuits necessary, necessary to sustain life. life. But poetry.
poetry, beauty, romance, love. These are what we stay alive for. To quote from Whitman, O oh me, O oh life, of the questions of these recurring, of the endless strains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish. What good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? Answer, that, that you are here, that, that life exists, and identity, that the powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. That the powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. And it was at that age, poetry arrived in search of me. I didn't know what to say. My mouth had no way with names. My eyes were blind. Something started in my soul. Fever or forgotten wings, and I made my, my own. own way, deciphering that fire. And I wrote the first faint line, faint without substance, pure nonsense, pure wisdom of someone who knows nothing. And suddenly I saw the heavens unfastened and open, planets, palpitating plantations, shadow, perforated. Riddled with arrows, fire, and flowers. The, the winding night. The universe. And I, infinitesimal being, drunk with the great starry boy. Likeness, image of mystery, felt myself a pure part of the abyss. I wheeled with the stars. My heart broke free on the open sky. No matter what you gain, your ego will not let you rest. It will tell you that you cannot stop until you've left an indelible mark on in the earth. Until you've achieved immortality. How tricky is this ego that it would tempt us with the promise of something we already possess? The dartboard hangs precariously on the wall in the study between tall bookcases and ornately framed oil paintings. It is almost camouflaged in the shadows despite its bold pattern, but the knife reaches its target each and every time it is thrown. Very near the bullseye that is obscured by a newspaper clipping pinned to the board. The clipping is a theatrical review, an article carefully removed from the London Times. It is a positive review. Some might call it glowing. The single sentence holding the name of the knife thrower is the one that has incensed him to the point of such violence. Reading. He continues to push the boundaries of the modern stage, dazzling his audiences with spectacle that is almost transcendent. No. The, the knife thrower focuses on that penultimate word. Almost. Almost. Clearly, he must be doing something wrong. If and my productions are merely almost transcendent, when the possibility of true transcendence exists somewhere nearby, waiting to be attained, then, then there's something else that must be done. A show without an audience is nothing after all, and in the response of the audience is where the power of the performance lives. Almost. Almost! He throws the knife once more, showing no signs of stopping. Your need for acceptance can make you invisible in this world. Don't let anything stand in the way of the light that shines through this form. All else is just smoke and mirrors. Distracting, but not truly compelling. Risk being seen in all of your glory. In this day and age, when it comes to artistic self-promotion, there is nothing more powerful than social media. Art is more accessible than ever, allowing boundless opportunity to creators and consumers alike. Trends move at supersonic speeds across the globe. You can wake up in the mainstream of yesterday is already in the rear view mirror, replaced by entirely new requirements. You must keep up! The internet, as a place to discover and connect, can be beautiful. Where artists once had to first get support of the art world's elite before reaching the moneyed masses, today they use Instagram as their own virtual.
virtual art gallery, playing both dealer and curator, while their fans become critics and collectors, witnessing the creative process in real time. I can sell a painting before the paint is even dry. But then there is the desperation, the self-comparison. In a world where anyone has the tools to be famous tomorrow, there becomes an infinite sea of artistic prospects to surmount. How can you possibly stay authentic and truly trusted while going to the top of that grinding impossible summit? Now fear is going to be a player in your life, but you get to decide how much. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. My father could have been a great artist, but he didn't believe that was possible for him. And so he got a safe job as an accountant. And when I was 12 years old, he was let go from that safe job. I learned many great lessons from my father, not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. There is no path till you walk it. And you have to be willing to, to play, play the, the fool. fool. We, all of us, revel in creating, whether we know it or not. It reminds us that we are not alone, even when we are isolated. Art is, at its core, an expression of humanity, of the need to provide solace, of the desire to feel we are part of a world beyond ourselves. It is an offering, an outpouring of fear, or a sharing of wonder. It is the human effort to give emotion wings, because grief is too big for our bodies, because joy is too big for our bodies. What will your verse be? Thank you so much.